There's a museum in Las Vegas that holds all sorts of odd and obscure items. Artifacts lost to history. Forgotten until they were found. Strange as it may seem, there's a piece of sports history that would fit right in here. That is, if it weren't still missing. My name is Ben Baskin, and I investigate sports mysteries, like the one that arose 25 years ago after Mike Tyson bit off a piece of Evander Holyfield's ear. There it is, scene of the crime. Because later that night, that piece disappeared. And what began as the most anticipated fight of the decade ended in a whodunit mystery so strange could have only happened right here. Welcome to Las Vegas. It was a night like no other in heavyweight boxing history. The only place to start this investigation is, well, at the beginning. Dr. Flip Pomansky, I was the chief ringside physician. They're in a clinch. They're in very close. And then I see a Vander start jumping up in the air. And I didn't know at first what had happened. A piece of his ear went flying to the ground. Hi, I'm Steve Albert, and I was calling the, uh, the bite fight between Tyson and Holyfield on Showtime. From my vantage point, I could not see the bite. I could see Holyfield jumping up and down. Then I saw the blood, at which point I, I blurted out, Holyfield is bitten by a dirty Mike Tyson. The referee goes over and looks at it, calls me in. I can see right away that there's an area of Evander's right ear that has been bitten off. I remember thinking, what did I just call and what did I just witness? I mean, is this boxing or is this cannibalism? Actually, it was neither, because Tyson didn't swallow the piece of ear. He spit it out on the mat, where it remained until after the fight when an MGM employee entered the ring. Hi, my name is Mitch Libinati. Um, in 1997, I was the MGM Grand glove cutter. Between fights, anything in the ring, I would be in there cleaning it up and getting it ready for the next bout. After Tyson was disqualified and the post-fight chaos subsided, Mitch was in the ring just doing his job. But that's when things get interesting. I'm talking to my guys and we're looking down and I'm, I'm looking at something that looks like a piece of the ear. My mind was, I gotta get that piece and I gotta get it to Evander. I'm picking it up and, and telling the guys, we gotta get to the locker room. You know, we gotta get this to Evander, he needs it. And I knew I was gonna make it to the locker room with it before he left. I get there and uh, I knock on the door. Some of the team came out, so he kind of looked at me like, you know, what's this dude want? And I says, uh, I've got the piece. And uh, they were like, no. I says, really, I, I, I have the piece of ear inside this latex glove. And sure enough, it was out of my hands. And uh, I made my way back to the arena. So Mitch distinctly remembers finding the ear. And I know the piece made it to the locker room because Flip, the fight doctor, remembers seeing it. It was dirty. It was mangled. What I told them to do was to clean it as much as possible because you were only nine minutes from the hospital. Flip says he put the piece of ear into a red biohazard bag and then says he handed it to a paramedic he trusted implicitly. My name is Brian Rogers. I'm a nationally registered paramedic. Brian was an, an experienced paramedic who was lead at most of the big fights. And uh, um, I would have trusted him with uh, any type of injury. I head back to Evander's locker room, and there's two paramedics with him already. So Flip Polmanski comes to me and hands me a red bag, and it had ice in it, and then another bag inside of that. He said, Brian, this is his ear. Take him right to Valley Hospital, and Julio Garcia is going to meet you in the OR. I said, you got it. Won't leave my sight. I took it Vander as far as I could without getting scrubbed in for surgery. I had the bag, 
the nurse that was taking report asked me for the bag. I gave them the bag. Notice all this, I gave them the bag. After that, Brian says he doesn't know what happened to the piece of ear, but he suggested I question the surgeon who had it next. My name is Julio Garcia, and I'm a plastic surgeon in Las Vegas. That day I was at a buddy's house in the pool. I was in a pair of shorts and uh, a tank top. And then I got the call, uh, totally unexpected. When Julio arrived at the hospital, he says the nurses handed him the red biohazard bag and told him the piece was inside. I said, let's get ready. I'm gonna go change my scrubs. Innocently, the bag was left on the counter. When I came back, that bag was gone. And I said, what happened to the bag? And they said, we don't know. One of the nurses started looking. I said, there's no bag. And they looked at me like, well, what do we do now? And I said, well, we just keep going. The ear was stolen? Or so Julio claims. He says he did what he could in surgery without the piece of ear. And after the operation was over and he explained to Holyfield what had happened, the champ didn't seem to care. And he was dressed and I was still in my scrubs. That's when he had gauze on his ears and he starts joking at me and he starts bouncing around. And he goes, hey doc, look, I look like a Doberman pincher now. But what actually happened to the piece of ear? At the time, Julio didn't tell anyone about the alleged ear heist. And since Brian, the paramedic, was the last one seen with the bag, he was accused first. In the middle of me driving code three back to the MGM, my phone rings and they're like, what did you do with the ear? I gave it to the nurse. Everybody saw me and they're like, well, the ear is gone. And I said, what do you mean it's gone? Well, we opened the bag and it's not in there. I was getting blamed for losing this dude's ear. And I felt bad. Evander's so nice to me in the back of the ambulance and now he's gonna think I lost his ear. What the heck are you gonna do with somebody's ear? But then Mitch, the MGM employee, was a guest on David Letterman, touted as the man who found the ear. And after it was reported that the piece never made it to Holyfield, Mitch now became the prime suspect. You pissed me off. Uh -huh. I, I knew what I did. Now I'm starting to, to, to worry or, or maybe people thinking I'm, you know, bullshitting. And then the rumors started. I was hearing stories of the ear was lost, the ear was sold, uh, the ear was kept. I've heard it was sold, it was at auction, um, somebody still has it, and they're waiting. It hasn't showed up on eBay yet. Who the hell would want to buy somebody's ear? You know, there are collectors of everything, but the people that would collect that, I would probably try to stay away from. If someone really did steal the piece of ear, I needed an expert. Hi, my name's Evan Michelson, and I am a collector and dealer of odd antiques. Most parts of the human body are collectible. Hands, feet, you know, everything's beautiful in its own way. So I think it's a pretty high likelihood that someone would want that bit of Evander Holyfield's ear. So who do you think might know something about what happened to the ear or where it might be today? You know, I haven't heard anything about it, but I would think that a high-end sports collector would be the most likely source of information. I know all of the major auction houses from Heritage, Golden, Christie, Sotheby's. None of those places uh, had the ear go through them. If anything could have happened, it would have been an underground auction. Guys with money, guys off the street, the black market, the same kind of people that would pay for a rhinoceros horn. There are collectors that would have that in their office for a conversation piece for a million bucks and not bat an eyelash out of it. Easily that item is a seven figure item. My gut tells me that this is not up on someone's wall next to the uh, antlers of a moose. It's kind of not uncommon to ingest a part of someone who is powerful. Um, that person then becomes a part of you. I'm, I'm not saying you should, and I'm not saying they did, but it's not unprecedented. 
Well, that's creepy to think about. Either way, there's only one person left now, the man who seemed to care least that a piece of his ear went missing. Hi, I'm Evander Holyfield, four-time heavyweight champion of the world. When Mike bit my ear, and he nipped my ear. He just got the curve part of me. Did you think someone stole the piece of ear? I probably could tell you exactly who the person was, but you know, I, I don't, I don't want to start no trouble. It was somebody on my team, people you would never think would do it. So, is this mystery solved? Yeah, it is solved, definite. Man, I got $35 million, but can, I got messed up here, but I, I, I'm good. <laughs> Holyfield knew who stole the piece of his ear this whole time, and it was one of his friends. So in my book, that's what I call a mystery solved.